Hi everyone, and welcome back to this comprehensive video series covering all things 3D modeling in Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check them out so you can catch up with us. And with that being said, let's continue. Our next step is actually making the background. And by that, I mean actually getting the lines. So right now I've just arranged it to like, it could be a, a drawing or a single drawing or a comic. And I'm just imagining my character maybe tucked up next to the bear, asleep, etc. And so the first way that we can get lines for our drawing is just by tracing the model. And as mentioned very early on, every 3D layer comes with perspective rulers. And all we have to do to see that is right click on this red X and click show ruler. We can also shift click that. And you can't see it because you have to actually click on the ruler to actually see the lines of the ruler. We see the grid and vaguely, you can see it better if I reduce the opacity. And if we zoom right out, we can see our vanishing points. So it's two point perspective, but technically it's three because we've got these green ones, which is the third, because it's a 3D model. So they will always have a three point perspective. And again, as in earlier, if we click show in all layers and we click a new vector layer, we choose a pen. My favorite is a real G pen or the mapping pen. Usually mapping pens are good for backgrounds because they're just thinner and less textured. But again, it's up to you. I do want to reduce this opacity just a bit, but as you can see, the perspective is working and I'm just using a mouse right now. Because we're on vector, we can afford to be messy because vectors are super easy to erase, move, change. So if I'm not getting 100%, I can just move that line later because it's vector. I would do the curtains freehand and the bear, or I would use line tools, which you can find here. You can do poly and just go like that. And if we delete that, you'll see. I would do it a lot neater than that. But again, because we're on vector, if we go to the operation tool, I can alter the lines make them neater already. See, that's already looking better. <laughs> and I just changed a few things. So vector is your best friend. Ignore raster, except if you're filling or coloring, just vector everything. So this is gonna make it really quick. Obviously, I'm not gonna do the entire drawing because that will take too long, but you can already see the shape of something appearing. As you can see, the doona is, a, oh, the doona, so that's what we call them in Australia. The blanket, the duvet, I guess, is not in perspective simply because it's material and material doesn't follow perspective as rigidly as, say, a chest of drawers like these. So again, I would use the poly line to do this one because you get more control over the poly line than freehand drawing, but you can still make it curvy. And on a vector, you can change it any way you wish. I would use a poly for these fancy bedhead sides and also for the lamp and these handles and this bag and the bear and the curtains. You're going to have props like this that aren't in perspective because they have their own perspective. So you can also just get the perspective ruler up and do it or you can just eyeball it. Props this tiny are not as important. Although it's going to look funny, I can just tell. Yeah, I didn't do that one too good, but you can already see the beginnings of something. And that took me, what, five minutes to do and we're nearly done. So it's incredibly useful. That is the benefit of 3D models. It takes a while to make them and get them in the right perspective. But man, they make things fast when you have finished them and you can use them over and over again. If your characters are in an environment that they will never, ever be in again, then maybe I wouldn't bother. Maybe I would, because again, it only took me an hour to build an entire set. Quite a detailed set at that. So despite the fact that you think you may never use it again, you might, you just never know. So I would recommend saving everything you possibly can. So because we used a vector, if we go to operation tool and we just select the layer, what we can do is just amazing. We can change the entire 
color scheme of the lines. We can make them fit for print, black and white print, by making them no anti-alias. As you can see, it shows up zigzaggy. Or we can go super blurry for online. This is my favorite, brush shape. If you register a brush shape, look up a tutorial on how to do that. It's very simple. But if you register your favorite brush, then you can switch it out. So I use the mapping tool for this. Let's zoom in a bit. I want to change it to the real G pen now. And as you can see, we've gotten a bit more texture. The other amazing thing is we can change the line width. We can go super tiny. Like, we can go absolutely ham and make it not even like a drawing. I would say maybe four is good. This one, I haven't named it, but I downloaded this one and I will link it in the description. Generally in manga, at least, the backgrounds are quite crisp compared to the characters. I'm actually a fan of a more rough looking style, so I really like the effect it gives. I would probably duplicate this layer and have bathe with maybe the real G pen and have it like a quite a low, yeah. But I really like that style and I really like that effect. It, to me, it, it feels less sterile and that's an important thing to note is digital art can look very sterile and smooth. But yeah, this, I really like this. Because we use vector, we can go onto the correct lines menu and we can select thicken or the narrow tool, zoom in and we can, can thicken where the lines meet and narrow them. You might not be able to see that very well, but it's happening as well. I'm going to use this one first because there you go. There's a big difference. We can do the entire page and that can just give you some really nice variation. And I would use this, I think, more on characters and organic shapes. So if I had drawn the pillows and the doona, I would probably use the thicken and the thin more on that because that's a little more malleable and it has more shadows and alterations in those shadows. What we can also do is use the vector eraser tool. So if we go to the erasers and we click vector and you've got to make sure that this option, erase up to intersection, is selected. And what this means is that you erase any line and it will erase up until the intersection of that line. And this is the best tool in the whole world. Whoever invented this tool, I want to hug you and give you baked goods or something. Sometimes it won't work 100% of the time, but it's pretty good. All right, so that is the first way that we can get lines from a 3D object is just to do it manually. This is very good for smaller objects. As you'll see in the next part, I'm gonna be talking about LT conversion, which is line tone conversion. It's an automatic process where Clip Studio Paint, the program, extracts lines and tones from the model. And sometimes smaller props can turn out really funky and look very disturbed and not accurate at all. So there, I would recommend tracing for the smaller props. Basically, the smaller a 3D model is, the worse the LT conversion is gonna be, which sucks because the bigger the model, the more processing power your computer's gonna need and it will lag, unfortunately. So I recommend getting a good computer if you wanna engage in this or just trace and that's fine too. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you, please give it a like and a share so others can find it. What helped you might help someone else. If you could also subscribe, that'd be great too. There'll be plenty of videos in this series, so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. So let's delete these lovely, ugly traced versions. I'm gonna go back. We're gonna hide the ruler and LT conversion can easily be accessed from the layer property window. If you don't have this window, simply go to window and then go down to layer property and it will pop up. You can also access LT conversion from layer, convert to lines and tones. I've set it control alt l as my shortcut i'm just going to use this one because it's probably the one that most of you will select and what you want to do is click this one extract line it comes up straight away 
might take a while depending on your computer. But right away, this is looking phenomenal. This took not even a second. It's just a click of a button, right? If you imagine you are drawing a webtoon every single week with 60 panels, it's invaluable. It's absolutely invaluable for telling stories. And right now I'm noticing a problem and the problem is these grids because those are our primitives and we just don't want that. So let's get rid of that and we'll go back and we'll select operation. Select the wall and all we have to do is, like I said, just untick show wireframe. You can do it on this one as well. And now we've got essentially a normal wall. If operation tool is selected when you click this button, you won't get the example like this. So change to hand or to move layer or any other tool apart from operation to get this view. You can edit a lot of it here, but what we really want is convert layer to lines and tones. And this menu is going to pop up. I'm going to go through every single one of these. So don't be afraid. You'll know exactly how to work this in just a little bit. And that's it for this video. So please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share and thank you for watching. Bye.